Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, today, um, me, Maria Grigorieva, Senior Manager of TPA Global, uh, together with uh, Alanda Faima, our partner, will talk about uh, next generation compliance factories. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, type them in the question box, uh, and we will try to answer them uh, as soon as possible. So before jumping into the compliance factory topic, uh, we would like to yeah, talk a little bit about the TPA's global mission, which obviously includes not only compliance. Uh, we are helping our clients uh, to uh, create their governance models uh, and strategies for tax and finance, uh, design their uh, value chains and align them with their accurating models, um, and define allocation of profits. Uh, for that, we obviously use modern technologies, and uh, saying that, uh, we are helping our clients to plan uh, and implement these technologies also uh, in-house. Um, we do compliance, and that includes, uh, again, uh, defining the compliance strategies, uh, managing the outsource projects, and ultimately helping our clients to deliver uh, tax in control statements. And lastly, if things are not go as planned, uh, we help our clients uh, supporting them on tax controversy uh, and performing tax risks and opportunities management. And of course, for that purpose, uh, we need a lot of specialists and uh, currently, uh, our um, Amsterdam team you can uh, see on your screen now, but our network includes uh, much more professionals uh, that are uh, alliances on tax, on transfer pricing, but also software providers, data analytics partners, uh, and uh, compliance service providers of different kinds. With this, I'm giving floor to Alanda. Yeah, thank you, Maria. So the first part of our presentation today is what are compliance factories? What is this all about? Uh, so next slide, please. So compliance factories in the past, if you would have mentioned that, you thought about it, it probably was labor cost arbitrage. And in the left on your screen, you basically see uh, the, I would say, the standard example. Switzerland is seen as a very expensive, high labor cost uh, country. And um, yeah, assignments and um, um, yeah, work was basically um, yeah, given to countries with a, I would say, a less costly labor force. And that basically, yeah, was, Versus shared service centers that you basically would see in Eastern European countries, but also in countries like Slovenia or in, in Portugal. Um, but you know, today with the, I would say, um, higher level of automatization, and um, you basically see that there's an optimized human um, uh, intervention uh, now. Uh, which basically means that, yes, you still see the shared service centers, but those shared service centers that have a high degree of, I would say, um, IT and have optimized their processes, um, basically are significantly more uh, efficient. And that's basically what is the new trend. Uh, and TPA is actually well positioned because we are helping our customers and clients in realizing basically this optimization um, and that is basically helping shared service centers becoming even more efficient, uh, but also in basically increasing the level, the level of quality. Next slide, please, Maria. So this basically speaks about why is a compliance uh, center and why do we have this challenge for multinational and why is it needed? And, you know, you basically, if you look to what's happening in the world outside and within multinationals, 
we basically see that you know the stress level is increasing the efficiency level needs to be increasing continuously and as tpa we normally speak with the cfo the head of controlling the head of procurement head of tax and head of legal and regulatory and um all of them have this compliance basically a regulatory compliance um, um i would say issue on on their table and in case that has been organized well it's basically reducing the stress level and it basically when they know that their tax compliance is working every month the vat uh, uh, basically is is organized well and uh, the declarations uh, go out on time and payment is on time um then obviously time is is basically available to focus on on different uh, uh, matters on those matters actually that are important from a strategy perspective and where the executives of the company are are looking for next slide please so the header here is catch 22 for the head of tax and what do we mean by that um being in the head of tax position today is is not an easy position to be in on the one hand you have the executives and the cfo who are basically pushing for a lower budget pushing for more information more insights and on the other hand you have the authorities the tax authorities with more and more yeah, basically automated requests, automated reports that need to be uh, uh, provided, uh, more uh, queries and, and questions because of the automated reports. In many countries, we actually see that the tax authorities are asking more questions also during the year. So not just during their tax audits. So that basically means that, you know, being in the tax director's position and the tax director department of a corporation um, you are basically in a squeezed position so you need to do something to free up time without adding additional uh, a budget and adding additional resources and this basically is the automation uh, within shared service centers that actually can help you free up time and where tpa can assist you in getting to that yeah to that goal next slide please Maria, next slide. Yes, I did. Can you see it? No? Um, just a second. So I will, you will see the slide later. I will talk through the slide. It's basically what are the benefits of, um, yeah, of basically having a better compliance um, uh, situation and having a compliance factory. There's of course, the name is already stating that, that you're 100% compliant, that you basically increase the efficiency of the processes while reducing the risk. And at the end, it's all about governance and governance control. Are you in control of those processes? And last but not least, that is basically that you produce the information both to your executives as well as to the authorities on time and within budget and that you also basically pay not too early or not too late but obviously upon delivery on time and that all together is a significant benefit and if you basically wish your erp system with add-ons you can automate part of that obviously you're freeing up resources and tpa is working together with highly specialized partners with whom we basically have done several or at least depending on which area many uh, uh, assignments and projects so tpa has the experience to help you guide through this process and um, increase your compliance and at the same time increase your efficiency for those processes next slide maria
So this is a slight illustration of workflows that Maria would like to present. Yeah. Thanks, Arlanda. Uh, so for the compliance project, uh, we foresee that you need to organize a process from start to finish. And the start is, of course, your RFP. Uh, so as Arlanda mentioned, we partnered with uh, trusted, specialized compliance service providers. Uh, and these providers, uh, we sorted by the various criteria, including the countries that they can cover, the time that they need to deliver certain documents or perform certain tasks, uh, and of course the price, but also some more. Uh, and according to those criteria, once you submit an RFP, uh, the database of the suppliers selects those that are the best fitted for your RFP and provides you with a long list of such suppliers. Uh, then as a client, you can choose those that you really want to submit the RFP to. Uh, and uh, yeah, the RFP is sent from the system to those suppliers. And then they have uh, five days to respond to this RFP. Uh, and once you get the proposals, uh, you can select uh, which supplier you want to work with. Uh, and yeah, as you can see here, uh, you can submit the RFP just through our website and it's yeah already existing function. So after the webinar, you can maybe try. And uh, the type of RFPs that we cover, you can see them now on the screen. Obviously, these are quite generic categories. Uh, but even if you have uh, a very specialized request, uh, we will also be able to find the best match for you because um, we have a wide network uh, of service partners. Uh, and yeah, if that doesn't fit, we can obviously get you a, a recommendation for uh, another party that you might prefer to work with. And now uh, we would like to give some examples of such uh, compliance projects that we work on. Uh, and the first one uh, is uh, preparation of TP documentation. And when we start with such projects, uh, we are checking together with uh, clients uh, various criteria for the local files and master files uh, to be prepared and submitted. And this criteria include uh, the deadlines, uh, deadline extensions, uh, the threshold, the types of transactions. Uh, obviously, we also include client's preferences because maybe for uh, any specific reason, they would prefer to prepare one report earlier than the other. Uh, we then combine this all criteria in order to plan the production process efficiently. Uh, we also try to uh, allocate the uh, preparation uh, into yeah into groups of files, uh, maybe by the uh, transaction criteria or maybe by region. Uh, just uh, trying to uh, yeah have a stable capacity because uh, as you can imagine, most of the files need to be prepared in the second half of the year, uh, but that would be uh, inefficient and maybe too much work. So we try to spread uh, the files across the year to the extent it is possible. Uh, and such uh, planning helps us, of course, achieve efficiency, but also to uh, comply 100% with the documentation requirements in the local country. Uh, and uh, such production plan could look like the one you see now on your screen. Uh, and obviously, we uh, also keep uh, flexibility to change priorities if it is required within the moment. Let's say the deadline, uh, just like now, because of the COVID was extended, and we can maybe move one file to a later stage. Uh, or maybe you have an audit uh, coming for previous years, and you want to be prepared for the next ones as well. So you want to have your file early. Uh, and for uh, production, uh, we for production and planning, we use uh, TP documentation software where we uh, track deadlines and prepare the documents. Uh, and the software helps us 
again, to uh, comply with requirements, uh, but also to achieve consistency in this TP documentation prepared. So we really ensure that all descriptions are aligned uh, among the files that have similar transactions. We make sure the templates are uh, as standard as possible. And yeah, that helps uh, to have a clean uh, and uh, yet firm documentation. And Arlanda, now the floor is yours again. Thank you, Maria. Um, we have here examples that Maria basically gave, and I think it's also good to say that the RFP types that Maria presented uh, in one of the earlier slides that you have seen, that basically I think is a good example that not uh, we are just advising our clients how to basically become more compliant and basically how compliance factories are working. Also TPA is, is basically working itself on how we can streamline processes to be more efficient and to deliver a better quality service to our clients. And that's also why we, as one of the, uh, I would say, a few uh, uh, consultancy uh, uh, companies, uh, actually have introduced these RFP types where you as a customer, as a client, can actually have a very automated process to basically get to a request for proposal for a certain uh, area within uh, uh, the text world. So now here we have an example of the RACI matrix where you basically see the different functions within finance and within uh, tax um, where we basically then say who has which responsibility and that basically helps to also define who is basically reviewing the automated outcome of what we basically um, yeah, advise during these compliance factories and how those uh, compliance factories uh, can work. So this is one of the examples which we are uh, using. But of course, we also put in the external advisors that's actually what, what TPA can do for you to, to help. Next slide, please. This is an example of the world of VAT and uh, e-invoicing. Uh, also here, we see a lot of changes, uh, that especially within VAT. Uh, there's a high degree of automation uh, coming. And many countries, and this is the list of countries on this timeline that you see, actually require that um, declarations, uh, VAT declarations, uh, are only accepted in an electronic uh, format. And depending which country you're looking at, requirements are even higher that also the individual transactions are listed in that electronic uh, format. So that's something you can only do if you have a higher degree of, of automation and um, yeah, if you do want to do that in an efficient way, you really need to prepare yourself for that. And also larger countries, if it basically take Turkey, is, is already in July. So in just two months to come, uh, this year uh, uh, has this requirement. And Germany actually in November 2020. So in case you have a German subsidiary um, or a Turkish or Polish subsidiary, um, you need to be aware that this is coming and you need to prepare yourself. And um, so this is something which I think is important for you to to take away from this uh, from this webinar. Next slide, please. So this is all about the transformation. If you basically see and note that within your company, you need to, to basically automate some of these processes. The question is, how are you going to automate it in order to get into the best of class compliance uh, factory? And from our perspective, everything starts with, with the people. Um, it's basically, who do you have on board? Um, what is the process? And then you ask yourself the question, which technology or which technology partner uh, you will need to, to realize this. And the question about technology is, is, is important because out there, 
there are many, many technology partners uh, that basically um, say from themselves that they can uh, do that and can do that transformation for you. But, you know, it's always the question, what's the quality, what's the cost, and how much risk is involved in order to, yeah, to get to that transformation. And that's basically where, where TPA is, is coming in. We can help you within that transformation process by basically defining what is the need for your organization, starting with the people, looking through the process, and then defining together with you and with a technology partner who basically, from whom we know uh, the partner can, can do this transformation, that we then define together um, how the technology will be yeah, implemented uh, within your uh, system, within your company to, to get to this higher level of, of compliance and to get to the compliance factory. So next slide, please. Here's some details about, I would say, the process. It's, of course, you need a clear process uh, definition. You need to know what you need to do. And the slide that I've shown and presented to you about the RACI is, is important because that shows you who has the responsibility, who needs to do what, and what can be automated in order to free up time from your, yeah, from your most expensive resources, and that, of course, are the people. So next slide. Then the technology part, um, of course, you you need to have a, a governance that the governance aspects are are yeah rightfully defined so that you know that you know you know that you basically know that the outcome is is secure and is complete and and correct. Then of course you have the quality of the data architecture. Where is the data coming from? How do we know that the data is complete and correct? Um, that's something which is, of course, very important within that architecture. Then you look to, as a next step, you basically look to what is the source of the reporting uh, and what's the source of the data. And then of course, you match all those three points together and then you basically come to the best possible configuration in order to get to a stable system where you have to check and balances that um, deviations can be looked at before you actually do the, um, basically, before you send out um, the information to your uh, external uh, uh, tax authority or to internal uh, customers. Um, that basically is the, yeah, the configuration that is then needed. Next slide. Well, the change management, of course, is important because if you are doing a significant step in automating some of the regular information that you need to send to authorities, um, then of course you need to work together with your teams and basically also understand what's the risk and what are the opportunities and what we have shown you before is that the tax department and the tax director are in a squeezing situation where there is pressure on budgets not just because of corona but already before we have seen this squeezing happening well our expectation is that with the for most companies and most industries with a lower uh, sales and with stable, yeah, probably more stable fixed costs because that's more difficult to, to, to reduce. You need to find ways in order to free up, um, yeah, some of your resources within the department. And that's not just for freeing it up, but you know, you need probably to work on those met, those things that really matter and that are probably more strategical questions, but also ad hoc questions. Just think about, you know, some of the subsidies that you can 
receive in some of the countries where you have a significant uh, organization, that's a significant amount of work. And how are you going to do that when you do not have additional resources? And all this is helping you to focus more on those things that matters and to basically automate those yeah, regular uh, reports that you need to basically send out every month or every quarter or every year. Now, everything starts with the people. Then, of course, you look to the processes and you basically need to define what are the new processes looking, what are the responsibilities and how does such an organization look like and who of your team is, and there is Therese also again coming, responsible for the sub-processes, for the process and for the outcome. And then, of course, you have the technology partner. You need to specify what technology you are going to use. You need to also look at your data architecture. You need to optimize that there where possible. And of course, need to make certain that all that together delivers you the automation, delivers you the compliance improvement that you want and the efficiency that you can get with that whole process. And that all together is something where TPA has a lot of experience and can help you in the individual cycles that are designed here. But of course, also from a project perspective, in some cases, we have also quite some experience with project management of a complete project here. Next slide, please. Here, I would like to add some more words about the platforms that, um, yeah, partly Arlanda mentioned to use technology for your compliance. Uh, TPA uh, co-developed with one of its uh, partners a tool called IOLUS. And uh, this tool is a standardized web platform. And the benefit that it has is one of them I already described to you, so you can uh, submit your uh, RFPs through this platform. So it has standard questionnaires and it has uh, a, a selection of the uh, partners that can provide services to you. Uh, it also uh, includes the proposal formats. Uh, and uh, a little bit later this year, uh, this uh, platform would also uh, provide the user experience base and where you would be able to uh, yeah, try new technologies for tax uh, transfer pricing and compliance that are available in the market and yeah, assess your tax savings uh, and yeah, maybe learn some new skills. And another tool that is currently uh, in the co-development is a compliance tracker tool. Uh, this will be uh, a phone app uh, which will, in very concise and intuitive manner, ensure uh, tracking and reporting of the compliance tasks and deadlines. So the idea here is that the head of tax uh, would have such app on the phone where uh, his managers could report to him and if CFO asks, uh, are you in control of your tax compliance, he can just show the screen up uh, having all uh, yeah, greens, meaning that everything is uh, submitted, everything is on time, and head of tax is fully in control. And with this, I would like uh, to conclude that if you're feeling overloaded with endless compliance tasks, uh, you might want uh, to get help from a compliance factory. Uh, and we will be pleased to guide you on this journey towards being in control. And yeah, uh, London, you might want to add anything? Yes, and the team TPA is well positioned to help you within this area of increased and uh, uh, compliance uh, uh, requirements. Um, and um, the, the individual points where you need to look at are, of course, regulatory and risk challenges that we see increasing. And because of the network that TPA is working at, 
uh, with over 5,000 uh, um, basic consultants worldwide in most countries, we have a network partner that knows exactly what the regulatory issues are and challenges are in that specific country. And we here as TPA and MCM are well positioned to work together with all those partners for you and basically help you navigating and basically improving your, your compliance. The second point is the governance to the control. From our perspective, everything starts with governance and the basic is that you define well what are the areas of responsibility. One example was the RACI matrix that we have shown. We are able to help you with that as well. And then of course, in order to get to the efficiency and to standardize the, I would say, the recurring work that where you actually just want that it is on time, correct, and there's no, st no strategy behind it to improve or the outcome, but it's a standard outcome that, of course, can help you automate such a compliance cycle. And that, of course, as we have presented, change management and coaching of your teams is something we regularly do. And at the end, everything is basically focused on you know, that what matters, free up your time, and we actually would like to help you with that. Thank you, Alanda. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can type them now in the questions box. We will wait a couple of more minutes. If there are any questions so we can answer. Okay, we had a question. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Can the compliance uh, partners fit in the uh, dashboard of the compliance tracker? Uh, I think the answer is yes, and thank you for this question. I think it's a, as I mentioned, this uh, app is currently uh, under development, but uh, I think it should be, yeah, should be finished this year for sure. So uh, I will address this question directly to the uh, development team. Um, and yeah, I think it will be a good addition. Uh, and another question is more like an admin one. Uh, could you uh, send the recording uh, of the webinar? Yes, uh, all participants will uh, receive uh, a recording uh, of the webinar uh, and the slides um, yeah, in the next few days by email. I think there are no further questions, then I thank you for your time uh, and hope to see you again uh, in our webinars.